Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to take some of that material design that we saw in the last video, and we're going to learn how we can apply things like the ripple and the shadow to any element on our page. So that way you can build your own not only custom elements, but even using standard HTML elements. So when you click something, you still see that ripple effect, which is such a nice user experience and just sort of a great feedback item for when a user clicks something. So check it out. We're going to get started on that right now. So in the last video, we gave you a brief introduction for the material elements here. And one of the cool parts about using the paper elements in material design with Polymer is that you have access to these material effects throughout your project. For instance, by simply dropping this paper ripple or paper shadow element into your custom element, you can use the touch ripple effect. Now you don't even have to make a custom element for these to work. Uh, and you can simply just throw them into things, right? So for a quick example, uh, just to show you how easy this is to work, I'm going to re-add our hello world element, which is elements hello world.html. And then down here further on the page, I'm re-adding hello world. Now into the hello world.html, simply within our template, I'm just going to throw it right below this button. I'm pasting in the paper hyphen ripple. And I'm going to pass this paper ripple an attribute of fit. Now the ripple itself needs to have a position absolute. So to accomplish that, we're just saying fit. And this is sort of going to make it fit its parent. So now that we have a ripple effect in here, let's go ahead and just click anywhere in this hello world. And you'll see that the ripple is going all over the place, whatever, but it's originating where we're clicking, right? And like I said, it's not, in a, it's not a super useful example because there's really no reason you'd want this click effect on all of this stuff. You'd probably want it on something like a button. So let's actually add this paper ripple to just a div, right? So if you can add it to a div, you can add it to anything. So let's go ahead and make a new div that's just going to be like, uh, we'll just say, we'll name the div itself ripple. We'll have it a class of ripple. Inside of we're going to say, hello. I mean, we don't even have to say anything in here. And inside of this div, we're actually going to paste in our paper ripple. And we can do this with the fit as well. Let's go ahead and give ripple some uh, properties here. So we can come up to our CSS um, and the div with the class of ripple. We can say width 200 pix, height 200 pixels. And let's add a border of just like one one pixel, so solid one pix. Uh, three, three, three. Sure. Okay, now let's see what happens. We have our box here, and when we click it, we still get this ripple that's going everywhere. And that's because this ripple, if you actually check it out, you'll see it as a position absolute. And since this ripple div doesn't have anything telling it otherwise, it's positioned absolutely over everything. So when you click it, it's anywhere. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a position relative to this ripple. And let's just say position relative. Let's refresh. And now what you'll notice is that without having to even add an overflow hidden or anything, we get this ripple effect inside of this square exclusively. You click outside of it, nothing's happening. Okay? And you'll notice that there's a CSS property that's grabbing the host and giving it an overflow of hidden, which is pretty cool. Okay, so what are some other material effects that we can use? Besides the paper ripple, there's also things like the shadow. So the paper shadow effect. So these paper buttons are using this raised button. However, we want to go ahead and just use the same shadow using the paper shadow element. So if we scroll down here, you can see that the paper shadow element you can apply it a level of Z when Z is how far away from the page it is, thus making the shadow even larger. Uh, so if you can imagine a light source above something and shining down and the closer it gets to the light source, the larger the shadow is going to be there. So we can pass that in simply with a Z equals and then a number. 
okay? Now to use a paper shadow element, you actually have to use this as a container. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap our div in a paper shadow by copying this. And to our ripple div, we're going to say uh, your paper shadow. Let's indent this and then close that tag. Okay, and now let's go ahead and give it a Z so we can say Z is equal to, and I'm just gonna say five because it's a nice large number. And let's come back to our page, let's refresh. Now when you refresh, you'll notice that there's something not quite right. Uh, we have defined this div class a width and height, and so sure, our shadow is taking up the entire width because this div is a display block and this paper shadow is, if you click on it, you'll see that it's a display block. So let's go ahead and uh, change the paper shadow. Uh, we can change that particular element. We can actually give this a class so we're not targeting every paper uh, shadow. We can just say ripple shadow. Now using this class, we can say, um, this shadow that's wrapping around our ripple div is going to have position relative. It's going to have a display inline block. Okay? And so this display inline block is now going to let this shadow wrap around this div uh, like it should. We refresh and we now see that at a level of uh, z equals 5, uh, this is what our square, our div looks like, and we click it and we get our ripple shadow. Okay, so we've now learned how we can not only use the paper elements to use the material design style elements in our project, but we've also learned how we can apply those uh, nice interactions and effects to our own projects and our own elements. So there is lots more to learn. As always, I recommend just pawing through this documentation and reading everything there is about this ripple and all the different things you can do with it. In the next video, we're going to talk about transitioning using core animated pages. If you want to check out these demos, they're here. Uh, you can see some pretty cool ones. So grid to full screen. Uh, we click one of these, it goes full screen. Uh, let's go back. We can check out nested uh, core pages here, just like that. So there's a lot of great stuff coming up using transitions in Polymer. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.